Health Qigong, or Eight Section Qigong Exercises. As a health and fitness practice originating in the long history of Qigong culture, Ba Duan Jin, or Eight Section Exercises, has been creatively cultivated from that tradition, and has developed into a practice combining bodily exercise with deep breathing. It helps to get rid of the stale and take in things new, and to regulate one's psychological state. Jin in Chinese refers to high-grade silk products, which symbolize the precious and beautiful things of Chinese culture. As a set of well-designed qigong exercises, which help to improve the health and prevent illness. Ba Duan Jin has been a cherished practice since ancient times. Ba Duan literally means eight sections of movements. Qigong is part of traditional Chinese culture. Health Qigong is practiced nationwide, featuring a combination of bodily movements, deep breathing, and spiritual regulation. Ba Duan Jin is one of the most popular health Qigong exercises. The originator and illustrator of the exercises are said to be Han Zhongli. And Lu Dongbin, two of the eight immortal figures in a Chinese tale. However, it is more likely that Yue Fei, a famous Chinese general of the Southern Song Dynasty, almost 900 years ago, was the creator. A 2100-year-old brocade painting named "Illustrations of Qi Conduction" was unearthed in 1972 from a tomb in Ma Wangdui, Changsha, Central China. It contains illustrations of four movements similar to those of the modern Ba Duan Jin exercises, and is believed in academic circles to be the origin of Ba Duan Jin today. The term Ba Duan Jin first appeared in the record of the listener, selections of Chinese supernatural stories, written by Hong Mai of the Northern Song Dynasty, 960 to 1127. Li Siju was appointed an officer to take care of the king's daily life. He tried to follow the Taoists' practice of imitating the movements of animals and birds, and found that this was a successful way of exercising the body. He began to get up at midnight, sitting there practicing deep breathing and self-massage, as in so-called Ba Duan Jin. This shows that the exercises were popular in China at that time. In the Song Dynasty, there were two major styles for Ba Duan Jin: practice, sitting and standing. The standing style eventually developed into numerous schools and steadily became more popular. In the late Qing Dynasty (1644 to 1912), Ba Duan Jin was recompiled into a complete routine, together with illustrations. The movements and purpose of these exercises were described in the words of a song, which reads, "Holding the hands high with palms up to regulate the internal organs, and posing as an archer, shooting both left and right-handed." Holding one arm aloft to regulate the functions of the spleen and stomach, and looking backward to prevent sickness and strain, swinging the head and lowering the body to relieve stress, and moving the hands down the back and legs, and touching feet to strengthen the kidneys, thrusting the fists and making the eyes glare to enhance strength, and raising and lowering the heels to cure diseases. A complete set of traditional health and fitness qigong exercises was thus arranged as a routine, 
with theoretical backing and proven health benefits. The Chinese Health Qigong Association has recompiled the traditional Ba Duan Jin routines, and with knowledge of modern sports and the natural sciences, made thorough studies of the effects of the exercises on physical fitness. With new methods of biotics, human morphology, and medical sciences introduced, the new Ba Duan Jin has a more rational and scientific inner power. This achievement has injected new life into the ancient Chinese tradition of Qigong. Characteristics Ba Duan Jin is a set of safe aerobic exercises. Its level of intensity and routine formats are in line with the principles of sports physiology. They feature the following characteristics. Gentle, slow, smooth, and consistent. The movements should be gentle, relaxed, and gracefully extending, with a well-balanced body stance and a distinction between substantial and insubstantial. They should be executed in a round and flowing way. Without any restraint, they are done with a natural approach and at a rational speed. There are no interruptions in the course of practice. Rhythmic combination of relaxation and strength and of dynamism and inertia. Both mental and physical relaxations are necessary. The practitioner should get rid of all psychological and physical stress and relax the joints, muscles, and inner organs steadily from the inside to the outside. A state of freedom from all restraint is sought. Strength means the rational power required between the end of the previous movement and the start of the next one. Such is the case with the hand movement in holding the hands high with palms up to regulate the internal organs. The archer's horse stance in posing as an archer shooting both left and right-handed, the one-arm lift in holding one arm aloft to regulate the functions of the spleen and stomach, the head and hands movement in looking backward to prevent sickness and strain, the horse stance in swinging the head and lowering the body to relieve stress, the hand movement in moving the hands down the back and legs and touching the feet to strengthen the kidneys, the fists thrust in thrusting the fists and making the eyes glare to enhance strength, the head movement and retraction of the toes and buttocks in raising and lowering the heels to cure diseases. Strength is required just for an instant, and relaxation should be maintained at all other times. Dynamism and inertia are the outer appearance of bodily movements. Dynamism requires the practitioners, guided by the concentrated mind, to execute the movements in a flexible, vivid, consistent, and natural manner. Inertia means that the practitioner should be calm even when strength is required between two movements. An external pause does not interrupt the internal circulation, with the muscles still stretched. The stimulation of the intended parts of the body can be achieved only with rational strength for an extended period. The combination of relaxation and strength, and of dynamism and inertia, is the major feature of Ba Duan Jin. Combine mind and body to cultivate vital energy.
one's mind and body are closely linked and integrated into an interactive unity, which is required in Ba Duan Jin practice. With the coordination of a directive concentrated mind and a vigorous body, vital inner energy and its circulation inside one's body for health and fitness can be achieved through spiritual cultivation and physical exercises. Step-by-step -step description of the routines. Ready position. Stand straight with the feet together and the arms hanging loosely at the sides and the eyes looking straight ahead. Move the left foot to the left so that the feet are shoulder width apart. Raise the arms from the sides up level with the groin with the palms facing back. Bend the knees slightly. Swing the arms forward in a circle as if holding a hollow ball in front of the navel, with the palms facing inward at about 10 centimeters apart. Look straight ahead. Key points. Crane the neck straight up. Pull in the chin. The tongue must touch the upper gums. Close the lips. Keep the shoulders and elbows down and armpits empty. Expand the chest. Relax the abdomen. Keep the hips and buttocks down and the upper body straight and centered. Common mistakes. Keeping the thumb up and the other fingers down when holding the arms in a hollow semicircle protruding the waist forward, bending the knees too much, keeping the feet too far apart. Corrections. Keep the shoulders and elbows down, the fingers pointing to each other, and the thumbs level. Contract the hips and buttocks, but relax the lower back. The knees should not protrude beyond the toes. The feet should be kept apart and parallel. Functions and effects. Calms the mind and regulates the breathing to set the internal organs at ease. The body being held straight and centered prepares both mind and body for starting the practice. Routine 1. Holding the hands high with palms up to regulate the internal organs. Move the arms down a little from the hollow ball holding position. Cross the fingers with the palms facing up. Look straight ahead. Straighten the knees. Lift the hands with the palms turned in and push them skyward, palms up. The eyes should follow the palms as the head is raised up. Continue to raise the palms until the elbows are straight. Pull in the chin, pause a little and look straight ahead. Bend the knees slightly. Lower the arms to the sides. Hold the hands in front of the navel with the palms facing up. Look straight ahead. The routine should be done six times, with the hands moving up and down once each time.
key points. Expand the chest and body when lifting the hands, with a pause to keep stretching the muscles. When lowering the palms, relax the waist, keep the buttocks, shoulders, and elbows down, with the wrists and fingers relaxed, and upper body straight and centered. Common mistakes. Head not high enough when raising the hands. Hesitation while lifting the hands leads to lack of the required strength. Corrections. Sustained use of strength is needed when raising the hands and spreading the chest and upper body. Raise the chin first to support the action, and then pull it in to aid the elevation of the hands. Strength should be focused at the lower part of the palms. The purpose of this routine is to animate functions of Sandhya, the three portions of the body cavities housing the internal organs. Lifting hands up and down with the fingers crossed and relevant muscles stretched. Helps to ensure proper blood and vital energy circulation inside the organs. Stretching the muscles and ligaments around the joints and soft tissues in the upper body. Helps to prevent and cure shoulder and neck problems. Routine two: posing as an archer, shooting both left and right-handed. One. Continue from the previous routine. Move the body weight to the right. Take a step to the left side and straighten the knees slowly. Raise the hands and cross them in front of the chest, with the left hand out and both palms facing inward. Look straight ahead. Two. With the fingers bent, move the right hand to a position in front of the right shoulder. Turn the left arm inward and push it to the left. With the thumb and forefinger apart, and the first and second knuckles of the three other fingers slightly bent, to a position level with the shoulder, bend the knees to adopt the horse stance. Pause with the eyes looking to the right. Three, move the body weight to the right, relaxing both hands into palms. Move the right hand in a curve to a position level with the right shoulder, with the palm tilted forward. Shift the body weight further to the right. Withdraw the left foot to stand straight with feet together. Hold the hands in front of the abdomen, with the arms curved and the palms facing up. Look straight ahead. Repeat the above movements three times each on the left and the right. Finally, move the body weight further to the left. Withdraw the right foot to stand straight, with the feet apart and the knees slightly bent. Hold the hollow ball in front of the abdomen. Look straight ahead. Key points. When imitating the act of an archer poised to release an arrow, clench the fingers of the pulling hand and keep the shoulder and arm level. The shoulder and elbow of the other hand should be down, with the wrist bent, the thumb and forefinger up, and the hand in a hollow holding position. Common mistakes: shoulders raised, waist arched, and feet apart. Corrections: the shoulder and elbow of the bow arm should be down, 
The upper body should be kept straight. The heels should be kept apart. Expanding the shoulders and chest when imitating the stance of an archer can stimulate such meridians as Du Mai, or governor vessel, along the spine, and such acupuncture points as Shu Xue on the back, while regulating inner energy along such channels as the lung meridian of hand Tai Yin. It also helps to develop the muscles of the lower limbs and improves the balance and coordination. Improvement of the muscle strength of the forearms and hands helps to make the wrist and finger joints more flexible. It is also helpful for correcting such harmful postures as hunched back and shoulders, thus helping to prevent shoulder and neck problems. Routine 3 holding one arm aloft to regulate the functions of the spleen and stomach. 1. Continue from the previous routine. Slowly straighten the knees. With the feet apart, lift the left hand past the face, while turning the left arm inward, to a position above the head and to the left. Press the right palm down to in front of the right hip, with the fingers pointing forward. Pause in this position. Two, bend the knee slightly while bending the left elbow and moving the left hand down past the face to a position in front of the abdomen with the palm up. At the same time, move the right arm outward and the right hand upward with the palm up. Look straight ahead. Do the above routine three times each, left and right. Finally, bend the knees slightly and press the right hand down to a position in front of the right hip, with the fingers pointing forward. Look straight ahead. Key Points Expand the chest and body, relax the shoulders and stretch the spine at the waist. Apply strength at the lower parts of the palms when pressing the hands up and down. Common mistakes. Fingers pointing in the wrong directions. Elbows not bent enough. Upper body not comfortably stretched and straight. Corrections. Make sure that the palms are level and pointing in the right direction. Strength should be applied at the lower part of the palms. The elbows should be bent slightly and tucked into the sides. As the arms move upward and downward in a relaxed and stretched way, the abdominal cavity is pulled and expanded, which has a massaging effect on such organs as the spleen and stomach. Stimulation is achieved on the channels and collaterals around the ribs, and such acupuncture points as shu xue at the back so as to regulate energy circulation between the organs. The movements strengthen the minor joints and muscles along the spine and improve the spine's flexibility and stability, which helps to prevent and cure problems in the shoulders and neck. Routine 4. Looking backward to prevent sickness and strain. 1. Continue from the previous routine. Stand with the feet apart and straighten the knees slowly to raise the body weight. Let the arms hang loosely at the sides, with the fingers pointing down and palms facing backward. Look straight ahead. 2. Turn the arms outward 
with the palms facing out. Turn the head back and to the left. Pause with the eyes directed towards the left rear. Three, bend the knees slightly. Press the palms inward to a position near the hips, with the fingers pointing forward. Look straight ahead. Execute the above routine three times each to the left and right. Finally, bend the knee slightly. Move the hands to a position in front of the abdomen, with the palms up. Look straight ahead. Key points: Keep the neck and head erect. And the shoulders down. Keep the body straight when turning the head. Pull the shoulders back when moving the arms. Common mistakes: upper body tilting back, upper body turning as the head turns, incomplete head and arm movements. Corrections. Keep the chin pulled in. The head and arms should be turned as much as possible. This routine is good for treating and preventing diseases of the heart. Liver, spleen, lungs, and kidneys. It is also good for relieving stress. The stretching movements help to pull and spread the organs in the chest and abdominal cavities. Looking backwards stimulates such acupuncture points as da jui in the neck and shu xue on the back, thus helping to prevent and heal diseases and strains. The routine also helps to improve the pulling strength of the muscle groups around neck and the shoulders. Extend the range of movements of the neck, and exercise the muscles around the eyes, thus helping to prevent fatigue of the eye muscles and diseases and injuries of the shoulders, neck, and back. In addition, it improves the blood circulation around the neck and brain, so as to disburden the central nervous system. Routine five: swinging the head and lowering body to relieve stress. One, continue from the previous routine. Move the right foot to the right. Stand with the feet apart. Raise the hands above the head, with the elbows slightly bent, and the fingers of both hands pointing towards each other. Look straight ahead. Two, bend the knees to adopt the horse stance. Press the hands on the knee joints. Three, slightly lift the body weight. Move it to the right and tilt the upper body to the right and forward. Look at the right foot. Four, move the body weight to the left. Swing the upper body first forward and then to the left. Look at the right heel. Five, move the body weight to the right to adopt the horse stance. Move the head backward and straighten the upper body. Pull the chin in slightly. Look straight ahead. Execute the above movements three times each to the left and to the right.
Finally, move the body weight to the left. Withdraw the right foot and stand with the feet apart. Raise the arms above the head with the palms facing each other. Bend the knees slightly. Lower the hands to a position in front of the abdomen, with the fingers pointing towards each other. Look straight ahead. Key points. Pull in the hips and buttocks, and keep the upper body straight when adopting the horse stance. When swinging the upper body, the neck and the buttocks should be extended away from each other slowly and gently, and in a round and flowing manner. Common mistakes. Keeping the neck stiff and failing to swing the area of the coccyx smoothly and sufficiently. Corrections: When the upper body tilts to the right and the buttocks to the left, or the upper body forward and the buttocks backward in a curve, the upper body should be held above level to enable the buttocks and neck to be fully extended. The chin should not be pulled in nor tilted upward. So that the cervical spine and related muscles can be relaxed and extended to the maximum. Swinging the buttocks in the horse stance can stimulate the spine and the du mai meridian. Swinging the head stimulates such acupuncture points as da jui, thus helping to regulate the inner energy circulation and get rid of internal stress. During the swing, the waist section of the spine and the neck are fully bent and swung, which exercises the neck section of the spine and the muscle groups of the waist, abdomen, hips, and buttocks. It improves the flexibility of the joints in the neck, waist, and hips, thus developing the muscles in those areas. Routine six: Moving the hands down the back and legs, and touching the feet to strengthen the kidneys. One. Continue from the previous routine. Straighten the knees to stand with the feet apart and the fingers pointing forward. Lift the hands above the head, with the elbows straight and the palms facing forward. Look straight ahead. Two, bend the elbows and bring the hands down to the front of the chest, with the palms facing downward and the fingers pointing to each other. Three, turn the arms outward to let palms face up. Move the hands to the back of the upper body through the armpits. Four. Move the hands along the sides of the spine to the hips, and tilt the upper body forward. Move the hands further down along the backs of the thighs to the insteps past the arches of the feet. Raise the head and look forward and down. Pause in this position. Five. Move the palms forward along the floor, and then raise the arms and the upper body. With the elbows straight and palms facing forward, execute the movements six times each, upward and downward. Finally, bend the knees slightly and lower the hands to a position in front of the abdomen, with the palms facing down and the fingers pointing forward. Look straight ahead. Key points: Apply rational strength when lowering the hands. Relax the waist. Keep the shoulders down and the knees straight when touching the arches of the feet. Lift the arms to raise the upper body.
common mistakes. Knees bent and head down when lowering the hands, raising the upper body before raising the arms. Corrections. Keep the head erect and the knees straight when lowering the hands. Lift the arms first to raise the upper body. With forceful bending and tilting of the upper body, stimulation is achieved on the spine and the dumai meridian along it. As well as such acupuncture points as Yangguan and Weizhong, this routine helps to prevent chronic diseases of the urogenital system and strengthen the kidneys and waist. The forceful bending and tilting of the spine helps to improve the strength and flexibility of the muscle groups along the trunk to flex forward and backward. And applies pulling and massaging to the kidneys, adrenal gland, and ureter, so as to improve and rejuvenate their functions. Routine seven: thrusting the fists and making the eyes glare to enhance strength. One, continue from the previous routine. Move the body weight to the right. Take a step to the left. Adopt the horse stance. Clench the fists at the sides of the waist, with the thumbs covered by the other four fingers, and the thumb side of the fist upward. Look straight ahead. Two, thrust the clenched left fist forward at shoulder level, with the thumb up. Look at the left fist. Three, turn the left arm inward. Loosen the fingers to point the thumb down, and look at the left palm. Four, turn the left arm outward with the elbow slightly bent. Meanwhile, twist the left hand from the inside out, palm up, and clench the fingers. With the thumb inside, look at the left fist. Five, withdraw the left fist to the side of the waist. With the thumb up, look straight ahead. Repeat the above movements, but with the right hand this time. Execute the movements three times each, with the left and right hands. Finally, move the body weight to the right. Withdraw the left foot and stand straight with the feet together. Unclench the fists and let the arms hang loose at the sides. Look straight ahead. Key points: Open the eyes wide to make them glare when thrusting the fist forward. Try to grasp the floor with the toes. Twist the waist and direct strength along the shoulder to the front of the fist. In the horse stance, the height of the thighs should be flexible according to the strength of the legs. Twist the wrist when withdrawing the arm, and use strength to clench the fists. Common mistakes. Allowing the upper body to tilt forward and the elbows and shoulders to rise when thrusting the fist. Insufficient strength applied when twisting the wrist and clenching the fist. Corrections: Thrust the fist from near the ribs. Keep the head and neck erect, the upper body straight, the shoulders relaxed, and the elbows slightly bent. 
force is applied along the arm to the front of the fist. When withdrawing the hand, first unclench and straighten the fingers, fully twist the wrist, and then clench the fingers again with force. In traditional Chinese medicine, the liver is believed to control the tendons and sinews and is directly connected with the eyes. Making one's eyes glare can stimulate the liver channels so as to improve the blood circulation, help to soothe the liver and regulate the vital energy. Squatting, clenching the floor with the toes, clenching the fist, twisting the wrist and clenching the fist can stimulate the meridians such as Du Mai and the acupuncture points Shu Xue on the back, as well as the San Yin and San Yang meridians of both the hands and feet. They also help to pull the muscles, tendons, and ligaments. Prolonged exercise can make one's muscles firm and enhance one's strength. Routine 8 raising and lowering the heels to cure diseases. 1. Continue from the previous routine. 1. Raise the heels and crane the neck upward, paws looking straight ahead. 2. Let down the heels to tap them on the floor. This movement should be done seven times each, up and down. Key points. When raising the heels, try to grasp the floor with the toes. Apply the maximum strength for the raising. Keep the thighs together and the neck and head erect. Ensure balance while taking a pause. When landing the heels, tap them lightly on the floor while keeping the shoulders and elbows down and the whole body relaxed. Common mistakes. Stiffening the shoulders and failing to keep one's balance when raising the heels. Corrections. Grasp the floor with the toes. Keep the thighs together. Pull in the buttocks and contract the abdomen while pushing up with the head and lowering the shoulders. The tension in the toes can stimulate the channels and collaterals of the feet and regulate the functions of the related organs. Tapping the heels on the floor can stimulate the spine and the dumai meridian along it and improve blood and inner energy circulation to reach an internal balance. It also helps to develop the calf muscle groups and stretch the muscles and ligaments of the feet, thus enhancing the balance capability. Tapping the floor with the heels can stimulate the joints in the lower limbs and spine and relax the muscles throughout the body. Closing form. 1. Continue from the previous routine. Turn the arms inward. Swing the arms to the level of the hips with the palms facing back. Look straight ahead. 2. Bend the elbows and allow the palms to overlap at Dantian, a point about 2 inches below the navel with the left palm inside for a male practitioner and the right palm inside for a female one. 3. Allow the hands to hang loosely at the sides. Look straight ahead. Key points. Place the overlapped palms at Dantian point and keep the whole body relaxed to drive qi into Dantian body in a composed and sober state. 
with such tuning exercises as rubbing palms and hand backs, face massage and limb relaxation. The main purpose of the closing form is to resettle the inner energy circulation, tune the body, relax the muscles, refresh the mind, consolidate the effects of the exercises, and regain the state of calmness experienced before the start of the exercises. Complete demonstration.